Hi, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for stopping by. This week we are going to cast and turn the cherry barrel that we roughed out and stabilized in a video two weeks ago. And I'll put a link in the description to that video for anyone who missed it. Um, I asked viewers to comment what color they'd like to see me cast that in. And by a narrow margin, blue one out over red. Um, so I listed all the base colors that people wanted and I listed all the highlight colors that people wanted. And uh, kind of worked out that blue with white or silver uh, was going to be the winner. So, uh, But it was so close that I think the next one I do is going to be red with copper. So um, so you can see which colors I'm using. I just used blue uh, translucent dye by um, Illumilite. And I'm using Casper's Choice colors here. And you can see the, the covers uh, of the mica powders that I'm using. So what I've got is the containers here with the two main base colors, the two blues. And I've got the two accent colors and the smaller containers there in the background. Uh, this is only the A side of the uh, Red Creek Wood Designs Thick Pour. Uh, so I'm going to mix the colors into them now. And then once I get them mixed up here, I will go back and add the B side to it. And I've got lots of work time on this, but I do want to hurry up and get it into the pressure pot because uh, the, the more liquid the resin is the better it will go into the very small little holes that are in these cherry barrels so if you want to try the red creek wood designs resin if you look in the description there's a discount code uh, that gets you 10 percent off now i'm just going to take each container and top it up with the b side to the correct proportion One of the most difficult parts about casting irregular barrels like this is getting a mold that doesn't leak and one that doesn't take a ton more resin than what you actually need. Now, I would far sooner use more resin than make a mold that's going to leak in my pressure pot and lose all my resin. So, uh, for starters, I mixed way more than I needed on purpose so that I would have some to put in an overpour that I can use for another project down the road. So you can see I'm just dumping a little bit of these in at a time, um, just mixing them that run over the burl so that kind of washes down the side and I'm hoping that it'll wash into the, the voids as it goes down through and leaves some nice swirl. So this is actually two containers uh, top to top and when I take them apart you'll see how they went together. It was just way too hard to film um, putting these things together just hands in the way so uh, you'll get to see how it's together when I take it apart when it comes out of the pressure pot in a few days. Now I did hot melt glue the center of the burl into the center of the bottom container um, but I don't trust that not to hold it down enough so it don't float. So I'm going to put this block on it and tape it down. Um, didn't think I had it as embedded in the resin as what I did but it was a bit of a session to get that off there. I had to take a hammer and, and bang it off as you'll see in a bit. So now it'll go into the pressure pot for three days. All right, so we're back out of the pressure pot now, and as you'll see here in a minute, I use an excessive amount of tape on this. I wanted to make absolutely sure that it didn't leak. And then um, in the joint between the two containers, uh, there was a gap there that was about a half an inch uh, wide, and I've completely sealed that all the way around, completely full with hot milk glue. And then I took it to my belt sander and sanded it off flush so that my tape would sit in nice and tight. And because of the shape of this, where there's two cones sitting top to top, I knew this wasn't going to come out with mold release, and I knew I'd have to cut it out, so that's what I'm doing now. So it looks like it swirled pretty nicely. Um, again, where I poured it right over the wood, it's probably going to look different inside than it does on the outside, so I'm kind of anxious to see how that goes. So I could have turned this off, but I really wanted to get it off to, before I started because I have the center mark in the tenon that's on the end underneath this and I really wanted to use that at least to start uh, exactly where I ended off and you can see the, the tenon there. 
So I have this back between centers and both center marks from when I originally roughed it in are still intact. Um, but we dried this and we stabilized it, so probably the wood's moved. Uh, but I'm not sure how much it's moved. But I'll know right now all I want to do is remove the resin down to the surface of the barrel that I had when I, when I, before I cast it. And um, I'll know when I start cutting it closer to the burl. If I'm cutting burl on one side and there's excess resin on the other, then I know that it's not aligned and I may have to adjust it. So you can see where it's shiny, where my hand was there on the top. That is the outside of the original casting. So I haven't touched that with a chisel yet, and I'm into the burl on the other side. So I'm figuring out now that I'm not 100% um, true to where I was when I roughed it in. So I'm going to make a little adjustment on the tailstock and just set it over. So you see that I'll take the shiny part is right by my uh, tool rest there. I'm going to move it in toward the tool rest so that I'm closer where that is. And I'm just going to go back and touch it up on the outside again. So let's get it pretty close now to where it was when I roughed it in in terms of orientation. So I'm happy with that and I'm just going to clean off a little bit more here. So I'm just going to refine the shape a little bit now. So now I'm going to make a tenon in the top so that I can put it in a four jaw chuck and turn a mortise on the bottom.
going to use a couple of different skew chisels on their side, which act like a negative ray scraper, which um, really puts a much nicer finish on the outside, takes away all the tool lines and whatnot. It's really not fast because you're taking such a very, very light cut, but it is effective. Saves a lot of sanding. My camera shut off here and I missed just a very little bit of cleaning up this top part. So I'm happy with the finish that's turned into this now and I'm happy with the shape. And so the next step will be sanding, which I'm going to do off camera. And I'll bring you back when I'm ready to put on some Yorkshire grit. My camera battery had died and I hadn't noticed it, but I'm just turning the mortise in the bottom here now. So I slowed this down 50 times to try and figure out what happened here. And you can see that the chisel is just barely touching the wood. There's just the tiniest little fine chip coming off. Uh, and then poof, it's gone. But if you look in the jaws, you'll see that there's blue resin left in there. And I never had that happen before. And what I suspect is that I probably had some cactus juice resin left on the top of this because I really didn't go back over that part. Um, I do go over the body because it doesn't bond, um, casting resin doesn't bond well to cactus juice resin. So my guess is that um, that bond just broke. So I'm just finishing up the bottom. I'm going to finish turning my mortise now and uh, finish the bottom up. And here I am with my little dovetail tool and you can imagine how excited I was to do that because I hadn't seen the footage to know what happened. So I've got the bottom finished now with Yorkshire Grit Regular and Microfine and I did put Hamster Sheen High Gloss on it. And as I take it out of the four jaw chuck here, you'll see that the resin had come apart from the wood. Now I thought it came off when it hit the floor, but uh, after I've seen the film and saw that it was still in the jaws, I know what happened. So we'll get this flipped around and put on the four jaw chuck in the mortise and expansion mode. And um, I started to lay it up, and of course I knew there was no chance this was ever going to run true after that. And you'll see here as I start to lay it up that it is out of whack by a significant amount. So that means I have to redo this outside. So I'm just going to clean up the top here so that my tailstock spur center can have clean wood to get into and not want to find its way into that existing hole that's off center. So the only significant damage that I got is just inside of this circle. But because it's not sitting center anymore, I have to return and refinish the outside. And you've already seen that once, so I'm going to do that off camera. And I'll bring you back when I've got that done. All right, so we're back to where we were before now. The outside's all refinished. Turned out very nicely. So I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to put my steady rest on this because stabilized barrel does cut really hard. And um, I want to make sure if I do get vibration that it's not going to affect anything. 
So I'm going to run a two and a quarter inch Forstner bit down seven inches into this to help speed up the hollowing process because hollowing a stabilized burl is not any fun. It is extremely hard and it just comes out in powder. So I'm just going to show you a bit of the start of the hollowing because again I, I know folks want to see more hollowing but there really isn't anything to see. You, you can't see down into the vessel and so all that you can see in this opening is what you see now. Uh, if I show you more than that then I can't see to hollow so it doesn't really work out well. All right, so I got the inside completely done now. Uh, I've got some Hampshire Sheen high gloss in here. I'm just going to buff it up. And if you're still with me, thanks for sticking around. I really appreciate it. Thanks again to everyone who watches my videos and subscribes to the channel. I appreciate that a ton as well. And if you like what you saw and haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It does help the channel a ton. It doesn't cost anything. And uh, please do leave a comment, a thumbs up or thumbs down. Let me know what you thought. And thanks again to everyone who gave me suggestions for the resin color. I really appreciate that. And for the folks who did want red, uh, the next one that I do in cherry will be red and copper or some combination of reds. I'll put some stills up at the end, and we'll see you next time.